Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first day of AP Environmental Science e-learning. Today we are covering the Introduction to Municipal Solid Waste. It's modules 51 and 52. Let's see here. So, drag me down there. Today, before you leave our e-learning session, you are going to be able to describe systems that led us to our current waste disposal trends. You are going to be able to describe our current waste disposal trends. You are going to describe the content of our solid waste stream, name the three R's and describe each one, and describe the process of composting and how it diverts material from the solid waste stream. So things that you are responsible for, for e-learning. Number one, you have Bellwork. Bellwork is on a Google form. It is where I'm gonna ask just like our IP quiz questions. So uh, questions off of your reading guides. And it's also going to be where you are going to upload your homework. And what I would like for you to do with that is please fill out the Google form. And at the bottom, there should be a place that you can upload a picture of your reading guides. Um, you should be able to do this using your cell phone or your computer. If you are having troubles, I would try taking a picture with your cell phone, emailing it to yourself, and then uploading it like from your computer. Uh, but if you're having issues, email me, let me know. I know that this is we're in brand new territory. Um, the second thing that I'm asking you to upload on your bell work is if you were able to complete the post lab questions about CO2 emissions in cars, upload that. I know I have some people who are having a hard time um, getting that data. So I'm going to try to work and have a spreadsheet of that data compiled that we can all share and like hopefully upload those post labs at a later date. Uh, so if you didn't have access to the data, if you couldn't open it up on your own computer, don't, don't panic. It's going to be okay. Um, second thing is the lecture, which hopefully you are there because this is the lecture. Uh, we're talking about municipal solid waste today. Third thing is a reading. You're reading about China and our recycling. And then there are questions to fill out on a Google form. And then the fourth thing is your IP, which is to read module 53. It's about landfills and answer those reading guide questions. Um, coming up, we are going to be doing stuff on the College Board AP Classroom. So you'll want to make sure that you have access to that. Everyone should have access. You signed up for the AP exam via AP Classroom, but if you are having issues, let me know. We'll figure it out. Okay. So, starting out with our notes. So, your book says only humans generate waste. So, what does that mean? Like, does nature generate waste? Why doesn't nature generate waste? What's going on? Um, what about animal feces? Is that waste? So, just take a moment. Think about it. What is waste? And then we move on to uh, our various examples of waste in nature, right? So here we have a dung beetle rolling a big ball of poop. Um, he is a detrivore, so he is recycling that waste, breaking it down so it can be used again. We've got a slug breaking down some um, material. We've got fungi. We've got a snail. All of these things are recycling nutrients to be used in those nutrient cycles again. Humans, on the other hand, make waste that no one else can use. So if we look at our definition of waste, it's material outputs from a system that are not useful or consumed. You can't use it again. Our municipal solid waste is refuse or trash collected by municipalities from households, small businesses, and institutions. I believe your book said about 60% came from households, 40% from business. One thing I want you to know is municipal solid waste is not solids or sewage. So I know in our last, um, not last unit, the unit before that, we talked about uh, solid waste as in feces or human feces. Um, that is not what municipal solid waste is. Municipal solid waste is essentially your trash or your garbage. So if we look at waste as a system, uh, your inputs to the system are raw materials and energy. 
And then you have the use and reuse of a product until it's worn out or no longer usable, and then it becomes an output that could be something that can be recycled or disposed of or waste energy. We call this cycle the consumer cycle um, because this is like the use and use and use of the materials before they're made into waste. So to reduce waste, we want to keep goods in the consumer cycle for as long as possible and then recycle them. So we are now living in what we call a throwaway society. So post-World War II, uh, there was a boom that led to an increase in prosperity. Uh, also, we had many manufacturing companies that were no longer needed to make ammunition or war goods. So they had to pivot their business, and so they started making um, goods. And this increase in prosperity and the increase in goods that were available led to a shift in thinking in which ease and convenience prevailed over conservation. So it was easier to just make something new than to fix it or repair it. And we've been living in that since World War II. So think, what is one example of a throwaway society ethic that you've witnessed in your life? And how does it illustrate our throwaway society? Hmm. My example, I got cell phones. I've got computers. You should look at uh, the used projectors that no longer work that we have. Uh, we got paper coffee cups and lots and lots of paper. So all of these things are simply disposed of because it's easier to just start with fresh raw materials than it is to recycle. Obsolescence. We have two different kinds of obsolescence. So there's planned obsolescence and then there's perceived obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is when a product is designed to break down over a certain period of time. Um, so like this will wear out, your shoe is going to wear out and so you have to buy new shoes because it is now obsolete because it no longer like keeps your feet dry. Um, perceived obsolescence is when new versions of a product come out and make the public feel as though the current product is no longer useful. So you might need a new iPhone because the iPhone has come out, the iPhone 10 or whatever, um, has come out and now your iPhone is no longer good enough. Uh, here is a picture of a bunch of iPhones. Uh, notice they're releasing them almost every year uh, with minimal changes. So it's not really changing that much, but yet you people still want um, that new version and that's done via marketing. Okay, so if we look at what our municipal solid waste is made out of, we have mostly paper. So 30% of our municipal solid waste is paper. Uh, we do have 13% as plastics, 8% rubber, leather textiles, 5% glass, 9% metals, uh, our 6% wood, 13% yard waste, and 15% food scraps. So it's about 227 million metric tons. And out of that, 79 million metric tons are taken and recovered. So that either means reused or recycled or made into something new. And then 148 million metric tons end up going into landfills or incinerators. So, which played an important role in the development of the throwaway society? Is it the increase in glass of metals, objects made of many materials, attitudes changes after World War I, the shift in manufacturing to developing nations, or a rejection of planned obsolescence? If you chose... Objects made of many materials, you were correct. So when you have something that has a bunch of different materials in it, think about um, like an iPhone. It has a bunch of different plastic and glass and metal, and it's hard to break apart and it's hard to take apart. And because of that, it is uh, hard to recycle and easier to just dispose of than recycle. Highest material that makes up the highest proportion of municipal solid waste, what is it? It is paper, paper and paperboard. So three R's. Um, you've probably been learning about these since elementary school. I know, but we're just gonna run through them real quick. 
Uh, reduce, so a big thing in reduce is source reduction. Uh, source reduction means that you are cutting waste by cutting from the beginning of the manufacturing process. So use less packaging, substitute less impactful materials, and when reducing waste or changing materials, we must take into account other resources used in production. So source reduction can look like going from a toxic material to a non-toxic material. Uh, take a moment, jot down three ways that you can reduce our current consumption of goods. I have used reusable shopping bags, so you're not getting new plastic or paper ones, buying goods with less packaging, and using solid shampoo. Uh, this is all stuff that I do. Um, this is by no means like a like complete list. So whatever you wrote, I bet you're on the right track. Next, reuse allows a product to cycle within the consumer system longer before it becomes an output. It was common in the US before we became a throwaway society. So fixing stuff. Um, Patagonia is not the only company that, that does this, but they do have um, like repair guides. So you can go to their worn wear repairs part of their website and it will tell you how to fix uh, like common ailments with your clothes. Uh, just working to keep that, that material in the consumer cycle longer. They also have a used um, material like marketplace essentially. Recycle. So municipal solid waste materials are collected and converted into raw materials that are then used to produce new objects. This could be closed loop or open loop. Closed loop materials become the same thing. So I'm taking a plastic water bottle, I'm making it into another plastic water bottle. Open loop materials become something new. So I'm taking that plastic water bottle and making it into a like fleece jacket. The problem though is that those plastic materials end up in our water, which is no good. Composting. So composting is the creation of organic matter such as humus that has decomposed under controlled conditions to produce an organic rich material that enhances soil structure, cation exchange capacity, and fertility. It can be out, done outdoors, indoors, in bulk, in your apartment. You can compost. Uh, there is a book that is recommended in your textbook about composting in small spaces. And big thing to know about composting is you want about a 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. So you want a lot more carbon than you have nitrogen. Uh, so one way that is explained that you can do this is layer um, brown material such as like leaves or like things that are no longer green. Layer that between your green material like your used veggies. Okay, which is not a form of source reduction. It is replacing plastic mugs with disposable paper cups. You're not reducing a source, you're just changing the source there. And then organic matter in landfills is a problem. Why? It forms methane. And that, remember that methane is a greenhouse gas that warms our atmosphere, which is no good. It's also um, vented out of landfills because it can become explosive. Okay, so apply it to your life. Uh, just in our waning moments of this video, what is one way that you would be willing to commit to reducing your solid waste? Jot it down, put it somewhere that you can like see it. Like, I'm going to use reusable shopping bags. I'm going to cut my, uh, my packaging on things. Something that you can reduce your solid waste. This is actually a really good time to look at that because you'll be at home and you'll be able to see how much solid waste you're actually making because you should not be really going many places. Okay, so rest of class, there is a reading uh, that I want you to do today and it's called China has refused to recycle the West plastics, what now? There's a Google form to fill out with those responses. And then your IP is module 53, answer reading guide and questions, uploaded to your bell work next class. Last thing, I have office hours. They are every day from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. I'm hoping to do APE stuff on A days and anatomy stuff on B days, but if you can't make it on an A day, feel free to stop by on a B day. I hope you all are well. I will see you at office hours. Bye.